Lord, we just welcome you in this place, dear God. We thank you, dear God, that you've been welcomed in this place, dear God, with a sweet praise and a sweet worship and a sweet adoration for you in the name of Jesus, Lord. We glorify you and magnify you today, right now, dear God, on this Sunday that you've given us, dear God, to come and, and worship you, dear God, to come and fellowship.
first two. And it reads, every branch in me that, that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Amen? Amen. Amen. And let us read the Decalogue, which is on the left-hand side of your pamphlet. And it reads, hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any idols. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not commit murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not lie. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah.
You've been given insight into God's kingdom. You know how it works. Not everybody has this gift. The insight, it hasn't been given to them. Whenever someone has a ready heart for this, the insights and understandings flow freely. But if there is no readiness, any trace of receptivity soon disappears. That's why I tell stories to create readiness to nudge the people toward receptive insight. In their present state, they can stare, stare till doomsday and not see it. Listen to their blue in the face and not get it. I don't want Isaiah's forecast, aka prophetic word, repeated all over again. Your ears are open, but you do not hear a thing. Your eyes are awake, but you do not see a thing. The people are blockheads. They stick their fingers in their ears so they won't have to listen. They screw their eyes shut so they won't have to look. So they won't have to deal with me face to face and let me heal them. But you have God bless eyes. Eyes that see, God bless ears. Ears that hear. A lot of people, prophets and humble believers among them would have given anything to see what they are seeing to hear what they are hearing, but never they had the chance. I'm going to preach on faith to produce a harvest beyond my wildest dreams. Faith to produce a harvest beyond my wildest dreams. Dear Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord God, that you have set the tone for worship and for listening ears and eyes that can see we pray, Father God, for our divine prophetic insight, word of knowledge, wisdom to come. We pray, Father God, that our hearts are open and ready to receive what you have to say, that we will be good earth and receive what you want for us, Father God, that we will harvest, Lord God, beyond our wildest dreams, Lord God. Give us prosperity beyond our wildest dreams. Give us healing beyond our wildest dreams. Give us deliverance beyond our wildest dreams. Give us revelation beyond our wildest dreams. Give us a study life beyond our wildest dreams. Give us a prayer life beyond our wildest dreams. Give us love and devotion beyond our wildest dreams. Give us a marriage beyond our wildest dreams. Give us a job beyond our wildest dreams. Give us careers beyond our wildest dreams. Give us everything we need beyond our wildest dreams. were extremely faithful in their relationship with Jesus. Yes, they were. The Bible declares that they had a special insight. They had the keys to the understanding of the kingdom of God. Mm. Now, when Jesus had to speak in stories, the reason why he spoke in stories is because sometimes stories can give you a greater revelation or understanding yes. about something that you wouldn't understand before. That's true. So he would give them some kind of parable, some kind of story to help bring to light what Jesus was talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, in this text, Jesus is talking about the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you have the kingdom of God, you have a special kind of revelation that he's trying to bring. And in this text, 
he's talking about how there's a good earth. And I believe mm -hmm. that the good earth is the mind of people who are ready to receive what God is trying to say. That's Amen. good. That's good. Amen. That's good. The Bible talks about they had some kind of insight. The reason why they had insight because they were ready to receive. Some people come mm. to church with blinders up. Come on, yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they, they come do. because they're not. They, they're more concerned about who's teaching the gospel rather than actually receiving the word. So, so, so they come with some kind of you know pre mis, uh, misconception of the gospel of, the, of Christians, and they have all these pre misconceptions in their mind that they cannot receive what God is trying to say. Maybe there's something. That they've been taught by society. The Bible says be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Yeah. So God wants your heart to be open first that you may be able to receive the season which he's putting out. Now Come this on. is what's very interesting about this text is that Jesus talks about how the sower began to just throw seeds anywhere. Amen. He didn't have a particular place in which he, where he wanted to plant the seed. The mm -hmm. Bible declares that he, he just scattered it. Yep. So he scatters seed wherever. So the Bible declares that basically everybody is receiving some kind of seed from Jesus. But the Bible declares, is your heart ready to receive it? That's so true. That's so so, so there's, there's seeds being planted all over the earth. And God is saying, are you ready to receive what I have to say? So you're missing something if you don't have good soil. Amen. 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 God says you are ready to receive right now, but are you ready to hear what I have to say? Do you have eyes that see? Do you have ears that hear what thus saith the Lord? That tells me that the kingdom of God is everywhere. Amen. Because he scattered it and he did not care where it landed. The Bible declares that it landed on gravel. The Bible declares that it landed around weeds. The God did not care where the seed goes. That means that God is telling us that he was speaking to strip club. He was speaking to cock girl cane house. God was speaking so God plants his seed. God plants his seed. And the Bible declares that he's looking for good soil to plant his seed. So how do we prepare ourselves to be good soil? The Bible declares that we must have faith. The Bible says we have faith the size of a mustard seed. So if you have faith in Jesus Christ, you are good soil for him to do a good work. Yeah. The Bible declares that the kingdom is an invisible kingdom. So that means the kingdom is moving on the inside of you. It is not a kingdom. The church, but the kingdom is an inside. It is an invisible kingdom that is moving in the inside of you. Yes, that's it. Amen. The Bible says that we move in a supernatural. So the supernatural kingdom flows from the inside on the outside. God is looking for your character to line up with His word. Yes. 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 So the Bible declares that we must have faith, but then the Bible talks about how if you have a great faith, the Bible declares right there in the last text, it talks about how if you hear the word, if you receive the word, then you will be able to produce a harvest yeah. that is beyond your wildest dreams. So mm -hmm. wait a minute, that tells me that whatever scripture you're standing on, God is going to do even greater than that scripture that you're standing on right there because he wants you to understand that whatever it is that you need for him, he's going to bless you in this season. Amen. Come on. Jesus. He's looking for a church that has a need. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. People who are ready to receive something that is different. You know, people who are not necessarily having everything laid out. That means that if you make a plan, you gotta make plans open for him to exchange the plan. You yeah. gotta make you make you gotta make you gotta make it open for him to erase a few things, change a few things, maybe correct a few things, guide you a few ways. The God may give you, send you a prophet to come and bring you a word, and you gotta line up with that word. But the Bible that says that we only prosper by the prophetic ministry. So God is telling you you need a prophet in your corner to help guide you to the next season and the next level in your life. Come on! He's talking about faith to produce a harvest beyond your wildest dreams. Do you have a dream to see what God is about to do? Are you writing down your plans and your visions? Are you sticking on God's word? Last, last Sunday, we talked about all the things that God would do. And even last, last month, we talked about how there is 2020 vision. But God is telling you, if you're not ready to receive what he has to say, you're going to miss it. Yes, yes, yes. The Bible talks about how the weeds begin to choke up the seed, begin to choke up the plants. And how all these things happened because it landed on gravel and it wasn't rooted. So God wants us to be firmly rooted on his word. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give you guys a quick point to stand on. On how to become a, a ready believer and to produce a harvest beyond your wildest dreams. The first point is you have to come with the open heart. Amen. You have to come with the open heart. And we're going to stand on Matthew 13, verse 11 and 12. It says, he replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. My God. He says, you are permitted to understand the secrets. That means not everybody got this revelation. Come on. Come he on. replied, you are permitted to understand the, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but others are not. 
Verse 12, to those who listen to my teachings, more understanding will be given, and they will have an abundance of knowledge. How much knowledge? Abundance. An abundance of knowledge. Yeah. But those who are not listening, also told, yeah. those who are not listening, yeah. even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Woo! Woo! So that means that we have to stay in the word of God. Faithful, daily reading the word of God because what little you have can be taken away by society and by media and about people around you speaking things in your ear that don't line up with the word of God. The Bible says do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You don't have time to lay up off the word of God. You got to stay rooted in what you believe. You got to understand that God wants you to stay firm in his spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Now my security also told. He's looking for firm saints who are unshakable and unmovable in this season. He wants you to get what God wants you to God wants you to have. He wants you to desire for greater. But sometimes we begin to look at the world and think that I need to do what they're doing to get what I need. But God is saying no. If you have faith, you're going to produce a harvest that which your wildest dreams cannot imagine. Yes. God is saying stay rooted in his word. Not conforming to what our coworkers say. Mm, Not conforming on. to what our family say. Yeah. Not conforming to what the media say. Mm. But standing on a prophetic forecast of what the scriptures say. Yeah. What I love about this is that Jesus began to talk in stories because he did not want to be the, the people to manifest Isaiah's prophet. He only wanted some people, but not everybody. See, God is saying that you have to understand that his word is accurate and true. The Bible declares that his word is flawless. And if it's a flawless word, I mean, you can promise and know that it's going to stand on it. I talked about that last week that the word is flawless. So if you understand that it's flawless, that means it has to manifest. It's not something, sometimes it may tarry, sometimes it may change, but God's word has to come to pass. It will not return back void. So you must stand on the word of God and know that it's happening for you. Yeah. Talking about faith to produce a harvest beyond your wildest dreams. So we're talking about what is the greatest thing you could possibly think about? Oh boy. What are you seriously thinking and, and praising God for? What are you writing down in your prayer? Like, what do you have on your vision board? Are you believing God to bring that thing to pass and even greater? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Sissy, what we have to understand, I talked to my wife the other night, and she was ministering to me about a text. You know, I was talking about how, you know, sometimes we don't want to do ministry because we feel like, you know, we're going to take away from our career and take away from our life and everything. You know, you know how pastors think sometimes. We're like, you know, I still want to do this and do that. Yeah, I don't know. You know, we, we, we get emotional. That's how pastors are. You don't know, you don't know. So, so sometimes we, 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 get, we, we still want to have our career. Amen? Ain't nothing wrong with that. But God says, you got to do my work. And what I love about what she ministered to me is that she talked about the story in the scriptures where the disciples were fishermen, right? That's right. And he grabbed fishermen, he grabbed tax collectors. And what really Medicine to me, and she said, Did you ever notice how in the text when Jesus told them to lay their net, they had more fish than they ever caught before? Um, I wish I had a church. Huh? So God is saying, He's gonna bless your career, just do my will. See, sometimes we think we gotta change the career first, but God said, If you choose me and seek the kingdom of God and righteousness, all these things will be added unto you. I need a church that know the word of God. I need a church that stands on the word of God. Don't get tricked and deceived in this season. God wants you to stand on his word. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. I know sometimes it gets bleak and you think that all the world is winning. Oh, they're winning. They're getting everything. They got diamond chains and cars and rims and houses. But God is saying, I'm going to give you those things. I just need you to do my real. Yeah. He's looking for somebody he can trust. Yeah. If he can't trust you, why would he bless you? Yeah. That's good. That's good. Faith ain't nothing but trust. See, see, see. Yes. We barely trust God. The Bible, Bible says he gives us the measure of faith. Yeah. So as you stand on the word of God and speak to that storm. Come on. I need a church Come that's on fire. Yeah. Come on. Because as Come you on. hunger and thirst for the word of God, he changes you. Now look at yes. this. The Bible declares that they had insight. If you look at some variations of the text, the Bible says your holy, the Holy Spirit is your advantage. Yes. So you have an advantage over the world. But for some reason, we think the world got an advantage over the church. The church does not have an advantage. The church has an advantage over the world. The world does not have an advantage over us. 
They don't have the Holy Spirit. They don't have true, accurate prophets of God. They don't have the word of knowledge. They don't have healing and deliverance. They don't have breakthrough and miracles. It can only happen in the vehicle of the church. God said, I established my church, and you are the church of God. Yeah, but I saw that he also told my brother that I don't want to see you. John and preach that pastor. He needs a church that is on fire and desires him more than the world. Yes, Jesus. This is something we all struggle with. Sometimes we conform. We think, you know, I need the word. I need to do this. I need to do that. No, he wants us to seek him first. And sometimes, you know, our careers get in the way. Our jobs get in the way. Our day get in the way. But God is looking for a church that actually finds him interesting. Yeah. That hurts. It hurts. It does. Even myself, I don't always find God interesting. Come on. Let's get honest and transparent. We all be healed. I would say, you can touch your sin one to another that you will be healed. And sometimes God ain't always interesting to us. That's so true. Amen. Come on. You preaching good. That's so true. So to my cup that did it. The disciples walked with him for three years. So they had insight that the other people didn't have. My God. So that means that you need to be close to your pastor if you want the secrets of the kingdom of God. I have no problem with big churches. Yeah. I have no problem with small churches. All I'm saying is you need to get close to somebody that can help take you to the next level. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you need the associate pastor if you can't get connected to the main, the senior pastor. You need somebody that can help take you to the next level. Amen. In the spirit realm. And in your understanding about you know, how our church believes in the supernatural. She's like, so when you say the supernatural, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. I said, I, I believe Jesus said he can raise the dead. He can raise the dead. Mm -hmm. And she said, hmm. And you know, I, I can sense her you know, maybe a little bit of lack of understanding or, or faith. And she, you know, somebody who professes to, be, professes to be a Christian. And that's the problem with the body of Christ. We don't yeah. have enough faith to produce the miracles. Now, we say yeah. we love a God that's supernatural, yeah. but then when miracles show up, we call it witchcraft or we yeah. call it something else that's unclean. Oh Come on. I'm saying that, no, my church is a powerful church. It's just that our church is in America yeah. just ain't operating in the supernatural power of God. Yeah. You better say that. Can I tell you what's on the pastor's heart? Yeah. What's on the pastor's heart? They want to see everybody moving in the spirit. Amen. You don't want a dull church and you're the only one in here that's activated. Mm. Ain't, no, ain't, no, ain't no power. Ain't no desire. Yeah. What, what fruit is that if you preaching to people and they're not growing in the spirit? Yeah. Now, I, I, it, it increase the pastor more than anything to that's teach right. the word of God and they still don't want to read and don't want to study. Yeah. And right. they don't want to lay before God. And, 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 you know, if you're really hungry for God, yeah. you will take a day off to seek him. If you really hope, if you really desire God more than anything else, yeah. you would just do what you, you don't need nobody to tell you, well, okay, God, we're going on a corporate fast. No, I won't go already on the fast, so I'm touching and greeting right now. If you're just hungry for the Spirit of God, if you're just serious about seeking out the Jesus, he's looking for a relationship. God wants people who are relational. Relationship ain't always corporate. That's right. Y'all, yeah. 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 It's not always coming together as a church. Uh -huh. You gotta have your personal relationship yeah. down packed, and it, it needs That's to be it. so rooted yeah. that even if everybody in the church starts talking about you, you still don't run away from God. Yeah. If everybody else in the church starts gossiping, you still got a relationship yeah. with God. If everybody yeah. in the church starts fornicating and committing adultery, you still got a relationship That's with God. Yeah. 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 You talk about relationship. They didn't walk away from Jesus when Judas betrayed them. They stayed in Colonia. They took up a uh, some kind of a uh, offer and they put names down, whatever, and they they they, they found somebody to take his place. They didn't just say we done doing the kingdom work. One person fell off, we'll find another one to fill his place. He said, God, we they prayed and said, God, we know that you know their hearts. And they'll pick the one that's right for us. Now, come on. Yes. yes. One person fall off, we pick up another one. Yes. One person betray, we pick up another one. Yes. And we give them time to repent because they might repent. Yes. I was meditating on that the other day. I'm talking about... Everybody talking about the president. Everybody talking about the president. I, you know, I'm not saying either one because I'm not going to be biased in the pulpit. 
Oh, wait, what about the kings of the Bible? Yes. The ones that murdered and try to cover it up. Mm. Come on, somebody. Mm. We, we got all this wickedness. This wickedness has been going on. Yes. We need to be able to pray and intercede no yes. matter who's in the office. Yes. We got to seek after God's yes. faith and understand yes. what he yes. wants to say to the church. Hallelujah. That's right. So I'm going to lead me to my second point. Move on the first one. My second point is Jesus. obey the instructions of the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Obey the instructions of the Lord. This is coming out of 2 Chronicles 20, verse 20. It says, Early the next morning, the army of Judah went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. On the way to Jeho Jeho Jehoshaphat, stopped and said, Listen to me, you, you all, you people of Judah and Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Somebody say, Stand firm. Stand firm. Believe, believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. Come on. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. Amen. Believe in his prophets, and you will succeed. Yeah. Yeah. The prophetic ministry is meant for you to prosper. Mm -hmm. Without Amen. the prophets, we don't prosper. Without a vision, we don't prosper. That's right. So God says in his word, you know, without a preacher, how can they hear? You yeah. need somebody that can minister to you the true word of God. And it doesn't always have to be the pastor in the pulpit, but you need a friend, an yeah. associate, somebody yeah. in your corner who is listening to the Holy Spirit yeah. and who can give you inspiration to stay on the wall. Yeah. You need somebody who can help get you straight and tell you when you're going off the road. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, believe in his prophets and you will succeed. I told you guys my testimony about how I've been obedient to the prophetic word. Mm -hmm. They didn't say I always agree with it. <laughs> they said I was obedient to it. Amen. God Amen. blesses those who are obedient to his word. If you know yeah. that's a true prophet of God, stand on that word. Mm -hmm. Wait for it to manifest. Mm -hmm. Wait for God to do what he's about to do because God is about to move in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. So that leads me to my third point. My third point. Continue to Ooh. seek understanding. Oh, Amen. Yes, Continue Lord. to seek understanding. The first one is Romans 10, verse 14. Romans 10, verse 14, it says, But how can they call on him to save them unless they believe in him? Amen. And how can they believe in him unless they have never heard about him? Mm. And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? My second scripture is Proverbs 4 and 7. It says, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Amen. I love how this scripture lines up exactly with what the Holy Spirit is saying. Mm -hmm. He said, if you're open for understanding and wisdom, he will plant it into your heart. Mm -hmm. And when he plants it into your heart, it will grow and manifest. And when it manifests, it will be a harvest in which is wilder beyond your wildest dream. Mm -hmm. So God is telling you as you stand on his word, those things will manifest in your life. If you're looking for wisdom, if you're looking for forgiveness, if you're looking for healing, if you're looking for deliverance, if you're looking for prosperity, if you're looking for a new job, if you look, whatever it is that you're seeking God for, he says there will be a harvest beyond your wildest dream. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God says you can stand on his word. God says his word is true. What I believe about this is that these people were possibly deceived. They didn't understand everything that was going on. But what I really love about this text is that they follow him all the way out to the shoreline. So much to the point that if you can just envision that in your mind, that he had to get on a boat and begin to preach. I believe that Jesus was just looking for a moment to himself. <laughs> but when they sought after him, he gave them a word. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. I, hear, I get that. I love it. I get that. Jesus will always respond to people who are seeking after him. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us stand to our feet as I close. Mm. I want to pray for every person in this room. Let us just lift our hands towards heaven. Let us just receive what God is about to plant right now. I believe that God is going to do something as I pray. Dear Presence Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father God, for this powerhouse word that you have given us, Lord. We believe right now in the name of Jesus that every seed that you're about to deposit from heaven, Lord, we command that every hope in heaven be here right now. We command an open heaven, Father God, that you would deposit seeds of prosperity, seeds of healing. Lord God, we declare right now that you would give us power, love, and a sound mind. Lord, we pray against depression. Lord, we pray against unworthiness. Lord, we pray against condemnation, Father. And we declare seeds of prosperity, mental health, good health will fall right now. Well, Lord, we declare right now that we will have a harvest beyond our wildest dreams. Lord, we Declare right now wealth beyond our wildest dreams. Lord, we declare right now.
understanding and revelation beyond our wildest dreams. Father, we speak and declare right out that those things will flourish and flourish quickly, Father. Let these seeds be rooted in our heart, but we are good soil, Father. Lord, we declare right now that we will meditate on your word day and night, and that we will be successful, Father. Lord, give us a hunger for your word. Lord, give us a desire for your word. Let us hunger for the seeds, oh God. Let us be good soil for the seeds, Father. We declare, Lord God, that we are good soil, Father. We declare right now that your seeds are falling into our hearts right now. We declare right now that we will never be the same after this sermon. We declare right now, Lord God, that your word is going forth. Now let your seeds grow and let them be deeply rooted in our hearts. That the sun won't burn up what you're about to do. That the birds won't eat up what you're about to do. We thank you for the good soil, Father. We thank you for... ready to receive, Father. We thank you for souls being changed, Father. We thank you for hearts being redeemed, Father. Now seal it, Lord God. Seal it, Lord God. Every blessing, every seed that you have deposited, seal it. And let it grow at the proper season. Let it harvest at the proper season. And we thank you for the proper season. In Jesus' name we pray that we want to agree and say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there is anyone who wants to meet me at the altar for personal prayer, please meet me at the altar. Amen.
the seed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. He gave such an amazing message that we need to understand that we have to continuously work on leaving ourselves available, working on our character so that we can receive not just our harvest, but a good word yes. from the Lord. Yes. So that when he does what he does and says what he says, we can receive it yes. and grow from it. Yes. Yes. The best way to prepare that soil is to continuously work on our character. Yes. Work on that being apologetic to me and meaning. fruits of the Spirit, so that our soil stays fertile. You're going to get those um, sheets. Raise your hand if you do not get a pink flyer. It's online, but we want you to walk around with, your, with it in your hand. This is our flyer to the 11th Annual Celebration of God's Love. And it starts next week. What we gonna do? What we gonna, what we gonna do? So we're gonna have a table here. We have that every year around this time. We're gonna have a table here, and um, some part of the service, we're gonna call for people to bring up things to be consecrated. That table is gonna stay there all month. Amen. Amen. We learned that along the way that that table stays there all month. Mm -hmm. The kickoff is consecration Sunday. Amen. You can wear whatever color you desire. Amen. Amen. We all normally know Consecration Sunday is, is usually white, but we don't necessarily practice that, but if you want to wear white, you can. Amen. Amen. Um, on that table, people will put oils that they want consecrated for the year. Mm -hmm. um, they'll put on that table uh, products, huh? wallets, people put wallets in there. Jeez. Anything that you need consecrated, oils, lotions, what have you. People put medication up there, too. Amen. Uh, we get tons of cell phones on the table. Uh, people put business plans on the table. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yeah. Um, whatever it is that you need consecrated and blessed for the year. Amen. People put their coats and keys on the table. And so the culture is that when we anoint, the Lord always gives us a word for that person. Amen. Amen. So this year, uh, myself and Pastor will be doing it. Be a portion this year. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's such a special Sunday. And then again, the following Sunday, those that you've invited, or you said, Oh, I, I did bring this, and you want to bring something else, that's fine too. Amen. Yeah. And so that will be up all month long. Be sure that you tell everybody you know about this special month. Amen. Make sure you tell everybody, because when we have special services, that's an anointing in the house that we never really have. It's always something very specific. And we don't even know what to expect. We just know it's going to be power in the house. Amen. So make sure every Sunday there's a different speaker. I speak at the end of February. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're going to close this out. The man of God is going to get us started. And I'm going to close it out. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So please, raise your hand if you did not get a uh, flyer. Everybody got one? Amen. If you need to get another copy to give to a co-worker or anything like that, make sure you see Sister Tarina to make sure. Um, also, if you want to get the electronic version of it, it's on my page. Amen. Amen. And you grab the electronic or ask somebody in the church to send it to you. Amen. Amen. We also have another announcement as well. And I'll give that announcement after we do offering. Amen. Amen. So prepare your hearts to give right now. Praise God. I'm going to give my offering too. If you need an envelope, lift your hand.
always give on PayPal as well. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go like this. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the seed and the seed sower. Bless it on both sides, a hundredfold. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everyone say amen. Amen. All right. At this time, we are going to have an announcement. One of our leaders received an amazing opportunity, a new job. Amen. 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 A management position in Massachusetts. Prophet Julicia will be moving on, and she needs Friday. Nobody 
knows, but my husband told me about her. And I was just like so apprehensive. Like, I don't know, I don't know. She she don't do all those good things, but um me and my husband when we decided to get married, we didn't have the funds to have a wedding. And so my husband kept saying, Jalicia, Jalicia. So I finally gave in. I said, okay, I'm a, we going to set something up. And she just literally scooped me up under her wing. She said, I'm going to help you with your dress. I'm going to help you with this. And literally, we got, with basically one or two checks, we were able to, she set up a beautiful wedding for me and Derek. She helped us with everything. She didn't charge a dime. She took me where she go get her uh her deals and everything and I just felt so loved and I'm like man I'm not related to you you know I wasn't around you but she just took me right in and that just blessed me and my husband so much and when um this church when she came to our house to bless our house I just knew I could trust her word when she said this was a good foundation for me and my husband to find a church together and it has been such a blessing. So I thank you so much. We are going to truly, truly miss you. But I am so happy. Prophecies are being fulfilled. And I am so thankful. My faith has grown so much since I came to this church and since you came into my life. So I thank you so, so much. Like her poise is ridiculous. 
if I if I don't take nothing else from her, I take her poise. I ask God for that poise. Like she called me like, yeah, me and Lisa just got into a car accident, but we're still going and everything. Everything's fine. <laughs> I don't know. I just I gotta I just gotta go get my um I gotta get my ovaries checked. I was bleeding for twenty nine days. Everything's all right. I'll, I'll call you when you get up. You what? Like, would have passed out just hearing that. Like, it ain't even me. I just, but I was cultured to pray for my mentor. And when she mm -hmm. called and told me, she couldn't even hold the tears back because I was calling her for about four days straight, the same time in the morning when I get to work. She even wasn't answering the phone. I was getting worried. Then she said, like, What's she doing? Is she dodging her brother or something? She called me. She was like, Sweetie. I'm like, Oh gosh. Not something else. She said, I'm pregnant. I dropped my phone in the snow. I don't know what I do. I drop my phone. I dropped my phone. And whatever, whatever season, I dropped my phone. And I picked it up. I said, say that again. She said, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm pregnant. And I said, oh my God. I look into your eyes and I know one thing for sure. There is a God. Amen. Amen. And he can do any and all and everything. Hallelujah. Thanks for coming. <laughs> I met Delicia in college in 2000. 2000. That's a long time ago. <laughs> and even just like we're in the same Christian fraternity, Jew, what you guys are seeing now, most of these, all of these traits were already there. We all saw the gifts already. <laughs> So when she crossed, her her not her her name was Big Sister Knowledge, and we all she always had wisdom and knowledge. She knew everything. So if you call her about whatever, you ask her about something, she da 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 da. da. You be, how do you know all this? <laughs> you ask her about this da 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 da. You know to the point where when I came to the church, I was just so broken. I was so just so broken. And because I didn't trust nobody, but I always trusted Jalicia. <laughs> and, and she prayed for me all the time, and I knew it. But I was so broken, it was hard for me to even receive sometimes that love that she always showed. Mm -hmm. Jalicia is a very consistent person, mm -hmm. very consistent. So, like, how she is with you, it's like how she is with you, like, all the time. Whether good, bad, or ugly, whatever. And I brought, I asked her to come to the church so she could spy on the church. Not spy on the church. <laughs> <laughs> I you said it too much. Guilty. 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 Guilty.
you know, back in the day, we talked about how we trying to leave. We all do try to leave Michigan. You and me been on this so Every time I'm hurt, and she say she about to go, and everybody else say no. I'm like, I wish you. Because I'm like, I understand that you want to go. And it's so bittersweet right now because I'm about to lose. I like, I told Tamika yesterday, one of our close, close friends yesterday, and I said, oh, my, I don't know. I'm like, to me, I mean, Jaleesa is like one of my closest, like, friends. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna miss her. Like, I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you. But it's, and it's bittersweet. I'm happy for you. I'm happy because you get to go and you get to, this is something you've been wanting to do. So I'm so happy for you. I love you with all my heart. We, I call you a lifelong friend. You are a lifelong friend. It don't matter. It don't matter good times, bad times. It don't matter distance. It doesn't matter. You are a lifelong friend. Yeah. And even if I only see you once a, once a year, once every five years, you are a lifelong friend. And you have been consistent. And you have shown me that that someone can love. Someone can. God is here. God, and, and when, he, when you think about faith, she's walking faith. Everything she does is like over the top faith. Like her faith is like rooted for real. Like her faith is on points. She believes God no matter what. And it and it exudes in everybody's life. Everybody come near you. Everybody come around you. They feel that. They know that God is real. They know that God is walking. They know that God is here. They know that God can move in their life because God is moving in your life. Yeah. And I, I'm going to tell you, I, I've seen so many things. And to Isabella, to God speaking to you about um, her being my goddaughter. You know, there's so many different things I've experienced from you. And I love you so much. I love you at the bottom of my heart. And it don't matter if I ever become, not ever, when I become millionaire billionaire, you ain't got to yes. be telling you. You and the Izzy ain't got to worry about nothing, but you're going to be there too. <laughs> Amen. But I just love you because you have loved, you loved me. You love me consistently. And I'm so grateful, so honored. And I'm so happy for you. And I'm a love I'm a mission. Amen. Amen. supernatural experience. <laughs> um, I just think about, you know, the first time you brought me to your house, you know, we were going for a subcommittee, me, you, and Terry, and just like you welcomed me in, you didn't know me like that, you just welcomed me, and you taught me so much even in that first time, and that's what, as she said, you were a big sister knowledge, like you really are a wealth of knowledge, and like since knowing you, you taught me so much, and it's just been amazing and I thank you for it and it's just effortless to you know to you you just know things and you just you know and I love that about you um also another thing that I love about you is like you are the like epitome of a people person <laughs> which is crazy to me like people you people are able to notice Christ in you without even knowing you the only person I've seen that on is apostle like you just walk and people know you and you connect like from when we work together you connected with so many people just off the strength of who you are and that was such a powerful thing to witness because we could just be sitting next to a random lady and then we just start talking about jesus and it was just like, i just love how you're able to bring that out of people like that is amazing to witness um so i just love you so much i thank you so much for being with us, um, you know, like Terry said, we all know you want to leave Michigan, so I'm happy that you're able to get this experience, go on the East Coast, you and Lady Bella, I, I'm happy for you, and I'm so sad to see you guys go, because I, I love Bella so much, now. I really do, you know, I know kids, like, they like to sit up under me, but that it's a kid that I'm, I'm drawn to, you know, oh, like really. And Bella is that kid, and I think she just brought such a joy to the house. She brought such, just a show.
show that babies can be spiritual, babies can pray. She's a testimony in and of herself. You are a te you are a walking testimony from a dollar house to you know a miracle baby. But Bella herself has been a walking testimony. So I'm just excited for you guys, but I'm gonna miss you guys so much. And I just thank you for sharing her with us and just showing us what it, you are like as a mom, because I see the difference. You know, you're way different, but it's so amazing to witness your transition from motherhood. Not that, it, but it was bad before, but it was, it's really amazing to see someone walk into motherhood and grow, and, and I just admire you for the way that you've taken on and dismantled. So we thank you. We know that you guys are gonna have a great experience. You guys are in great hands. Your friends are there. So we just bless you. We pray for you. And we thank you that you're always with us. And you'll be with us whenever you come home. So we just know what we want. <laughs> Massachusetts. Amen. Okay. 
So she's being sent out.
and a prophet to the kings. Those were the things I paid specific for. Sharia is my job. Come on, somebody. Tell me you're not dead no matter what. Sharia is my job. Pastor Maurice is my successor. Amen. And the woman of God is the prophet to the kings. Amen. God has used her to sharpen me in areas that no one in this region could. Because I have a unique call on my life. And it's hard to find people to fill me up to those places. She's definitely in no judgment zone. I helped her heal, and she helped me heal Amen. in the secret places. Thank you, Lord. To have someone in your corner that can love you and minister to you without judgment Amen. and still respect you as their leader yes. takes major character. Yes. Amen. She was not scared away by my flesh. Did y'all hear me? Amen. She was not scared away by my flesh yes. because she saw my heart. Yes, amen. Hallelujah, God. Yes. Yes. She was one of my most difficult deliverances. <laughs> <laughs> and the, I'm telling you, mm, those who were there, yeah. and we say it in jest because she helped us all level up. <laughs> because it made parables in the Bible be real for real. Yeah. And it helped me to understand that when we are in high places, there are high things that attack us. Yeah. And if we don't have eagles with us, mm -hmm. no one can help us. That's it. So it was the strive to become eagles in the house. Mm -hmm. From her deliverance, pastors all over the region, people flew in to have private deliverance sessions with us. Wow. Pastors. Because we learned how, through this moment of God, to be that secret, private refuge for those that don't have that in their lives. Yeah. She's implemented so much in this church. And then I ordained her and prophesied her little baby. Yeah. <laughs> Not to mention I was at both of her surgeries. Sad waited, and this little one came forth. And still, when I look at her and watch her grow, I tell you this little girl can have all my money. <laughs> my God. I never met a child that I was so connected to. She was a miracle baby, and so was I. My mama was supposed to have babies. She was barren since 18, and she prayed like Hannah for a child. And then they told me I was going to be retarded and sick and deformed and tried to abort me Jesus. without my mother's consent. None of it worked. Thank you. And here I stand, yes. graduated at honor student in college.
the day that she decided she was going to join. She said, I'll be here for five years and then God's going to release me. Has it not been five years? Wow. Exactly. Wow. She joined on New Year's.
May they scatter on your employment. May the favor of God give you quick elevation in 30 days and a raise with extension of health benefits, extension of retirement, and an extension of vacation days. Great favor. Perfect child care. May your daughter transition perfectly without a hitch. May she be comfortable. When mommy shifts, she knows it's time to shift. May she not stand in the way of what God wants to do because she does not understand. But may her heart be in support of the power of God. May everything fall in line.
Overwhelmed is not uh, the words, the term I can use. Thank you for entrusting me with your people. That is a high honor that I do not take lightly. Thank you for letting me tarry in prayer for your people. For letting the concerns of your church be on my altar. Thank you for letting the concerns of your heart be on my altar. For it is a Thank you all for loving me, trusting my word, and allowing the prophetic anointing to flow through me freely so that you can succeed in the manifestation of God's kingdom. If God's people can't hear and receive the work of a prophet cannot be done, thank you for being in a posture for the work to be done. Understand, and just because my altar is transitioning a little less than a thousand miles away, does not mean that my prayers has transitioned. I will carry you in my heart and continue to live my everyday prayers. I love you all. Thank you. That's great. We declare in the mighty name of Jesus blessings, blessings and breakthrough, covering and safety, the glory of God rest. Open up the heavens.
your shifts the way they're supposed to, causing you no grief or guilt for the leaf, but only celebrate your win. In Jesus' name we pray. We are dismissed. We can have cake. Elder Terry will give our direction.